Hello. Just waiting for one Gary Cully um, to connect. Live from Fight Week. He's weighed in. He's ready to go. Um, so let's get him on. Hope everyone is well. Hope you're excited for tonight's interview. Um, there you are, Gary. How are you now? Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> How are you? I'm good, you? Yeah, I'm good, I'm good. Delighted to get you on. Yeah, what's the crack with you? How oh, have you Gary's been? Internet is... oh, you, can you hear me? Your internet kind of went a little bit. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah I might throw on my... Uh, that's on the Wi-Fi. I might throw on the... Stick on your 4G. Technical error. Have Gary back in a moment. Don't forget, if you have any questions for Gary, you can pop them in the question box and I'll ask him at the end of the interview. He's How's back. this? I can hear you. Oh, I can see you. Perfect. Oh, there we go. So, how are you doing? Obviously, all weighed in. Rehydrating? Yeah. And locked how in was the bubble. It? Locked in the bubble. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's a bit weird. Like, um, we got here yesterday morning, got tested. And then was we we're in solitary confinement then for sixteen hours till this morning. Um food is all dropped in the room, we can't get out. And then once the test results came back we were uh, we were okay to go for a walk and stuff today. But um yeah, just glad to be fighting tomorrow and looking forward to getting back in there. So are you do you have to are you spending time on your own in the room? Like you can't have anyone in the room with you? No, I could like I went for a walk earlier twice with Pete. But when you're in, when you go back to the to the bubble, the bubble you're in, that's it. Like, yeah. yeah. So yeah. I'm so I'm like I'm jealous. I know I would be jealous of like the bubble, but like because we've seen obviously with the Frank Warren shows with MT Global and also with the Matchroom shows, everyone being in the bubble. Yeah. The bubble seems like loads of fun. <laughs> it actually, it's been good crack, you know that. Um, apart from being stuck in the room, like I don't, um, I don't know why. Really, really boring. Go on, sorry. I done um, like a live on my own personal Instagram last night and Lee Eaton came on, who obviously it's a promoter of MTK Global. And he was like, oh, I'm just in yeah. the bubble. I'm in quarantine. And I was like, how are you getting on? And he's like, I'm just in my room. I'm just in bed. And then you get food delivered. You can't leave. I was like, that's kind of like what I'm after yeah, like, right now. <laughs> it's kind of like a dream at the same time. But when, when you're like, when you're getting ready to fight, you kind of, you're you're excited and you want to you don't want to be stuck in four walls like do you know what I mean yeah. so it's um I would have liked to be out and around a little bit more but yeah there's so nothing really you, we're in Rotterdam there's nothing really there anyway so yeah it's quite enough there isn't it so for you fight week or the night before you fight um like what what would you be doing there would you be going for food would you be chilling out with friends like what would be the process usually like. I'd be doing exactly what I'm doing now, to be honest with you. Except um, I'd have my missus over with me, and that's that's the only difference. But like it is what it is. I, I'm kind. I kind of I get in the zone quite quite early in fight week anyway, and I can't really talk to anybody. So no, ma no matter who's there, really, it doesn't it doesn't really matter because I'm kind of just zoned in already. Um, in terms of like mental aspects, what it, what are you doing now? Like, are you going over game plans? Are you speaking with peace? Like, what's happening? Yeah, we spoke um, last night. We did a, a couple of rounds pads and down in the training room, so we could train as well. And we did a, just a couple of rounds of light pads, and we talked tactics down there. But um, not not necessarily. No, I've just been eating, enjoying this one forty life. Um, yeah. And um, yeah, I, I've been uh, watching TV, eating. Um, yeah, a little bit of shadow boxing in the mirror. A little bit too much. Probably, <laughs> I should probably relax. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, and and just being a diva, trying on the trying on the shorts and trying on the the boots and all for tomorrow. So, yeah. Can just... we get a preview? Are we allowed a little preview, or is it a surprise? Yeah, well, it's, where are they? They're right there. Um, just the same shorts that I wore in the Fitzpatrick fight. Um, because they only got they didn't get much wear, did they? So. Oh yeah! Oh, they're lovely. Yeah, they're yeah, really and cool. Then, and then I have a. Uh, we well, got new boots as well. So. Oh, very nice. So, where did you get your shorts on? Who does who does that for you? Uh, boxing. Oh, okay, Daddy. Boxing, that's really cool. 
uh, Kieran is unreal, yeah. So look, I wanted new shorts again, but I thought it was a bit stupid because uh, I didn't really wear the last ones. Like so. Yeah, get the wear yeah. out. Of them. Get the wear out of them tomorrow night, and then I'll put them up in the frame because I want the Irish title in them. So I'm buying yeah, a pair of You never know; they could be your good luck shorts. Yeah, exactly. Well, they're all good luck shorts so far. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. So is it just Pete that's over with you then? For tomorrow. Yeah, Noel couldn't come. Um, yeah, it's it's strange. Like usually we've uh, in Belfast we've a, a full team there for fight week. Like so, it has been a bit strange. That's just me and Pete. Um, obviously I do a lot of work with Noel. He's not been able to come. Um, but yeah, look, it is what it is. Like it's it's either that or don't fight. So yeah, you're, you're, I'm just glad to be fighting. So the last time that you were on with me, like it was kind of the start of quarantine, wasn't it? That like we kind of were in lockdown and everyone was sort of figuring out what they're doing, like in terms of like keeping busy with a bit of training and stuff. So yeah. how far into lockdown did you find out that you were going to be fighting? The, like the, the lockdown lockdown was over. Um, when did I find out I was fighting? Probably like six, seven weeks ago, I would say. Um, and obviously that was, that was the getting fight. No, yeah. maybe eight eight weeks ago, um, but that was the getting fight, obviously. And then only what two and three weeks ago, getting pulled out, and uh, Craig Wood just stepped in. So, yeah, I've known about it for look, even during lockdown, like I knew I was going to be fighting again. So, yeah, yeah. I had to keep playing. Do you know what I mean? I know you wanted to fight, but was there any reservations about the fact that obviously it's a very different scenario in terms of like you can only have Pete with you, you're in the bubble. There's no audience. Like, was that something where you're like a little bit apprehensive, or was it just I don't care, get me the fight? Yeah, no, it was just I don't care, get me the fight. And then kind of when it got made, I oh, start getting a little bit excited about that because there's not many that's gonna do it to be honest. Like, so mm -hmm. I'm just happy to get the experience. Like, it's a story, and when when everything's said and done and the career's over, like to to fight during the pandemic and uh, totally. You know what I mean? So it's uh, it's it's just another chapter in the book. Why do you think so many fighters have turned down fighting in this circumstance? Probably because they got fat over lockdown and they're not ready. But like, I was just speaking to Lee today about it. Um, he was doing a bit of matchmaking down in the hotel and I was sitting with him and he was asking me a couple of questions. And then we, like everybody always says on Instagram and Twitter, oh, I'm ready when the phone rings, until the phone actually rings. And then they go, oh, I need eight weeks. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I need eight weeks. Yeah. And like, nobody gets eight weeks. Fury will like I got I got eight weeks because we were coming out of of lockdown and shows that obviously had to be planned. But usually, like the headline of the show gets eight weeks, and then the undercard fighters are kind of drafted in. Then uh, as the as the show gets made up, so you might get six weeks, maybe four weeks. So you just have to be ready. Like this is the thing, and it's it's such um like obviously I'm not a professional fighter. I don't know, but I'm covering yeah. the sport a couple of years, and so. You, you hear people saying so much, stay ready, I'm ready, you have to be ready, you can't. When you fight, you take a week off, stay away from the gym for a week, and then you're back straight away to it because you don't know when the opportunities are going to arise. Yeah. And there's so many people competing for the same big opportunity that you have to be, you have to be ready, right? And especially like now, there's like, how many shows? Eddie Hearn had four fight camps, Frank Warren has a couple of shows, and NTK have a couple of shows. So how many how many fighters is there across the UK and Ireland who want to get on them shows and there's five fights per show like maybe what not maybe 50 fights that's going to happen so mm -hmm. like it, you're you're in competition with probably how many fighters to, to get on them shows and get them slots so but I yeah, think a lot absolutely. of people say they want it and then push comes to shove like they don't they don't really want to like. a lot of people as well have um, said that they almost in a way need the crowd that they one from a fan perspective where they want to be able to fight and their fans be there and then yeah. other people have said that they, they need the actual energy of a crowd being there yeah well like it, it kind of you seen that with Jono last week didn't you like he's an entertainer mm -hmm. and um, he he came came unstuck but look I think if you want to fight just fight like at the end of the day if you don't I know there's big fights on the horizon for me but if I don't win tomorrow night them fights are gone well not gone but they're a bit down the line you have to rebuild you have to start again so I think you just need to treat them like their world title fights like mm -hmm. it is what it is and you need to stay active and we were just speaking about that earlier on as well like somebody turning down a fight because of COVID maybe maybe the money gets cut maybe you're getting 75% of what you what would have been 100 like you would have you're losing out on what what a 
person work like a, a normal nine to five person like is losing out in a couple of months. Do you know what I mean? It's it's it keeps yeah. you going for till the next fight. Like I live five to five from from uh, purses. So mm -hmm. if if I don't get paid for this fight, no way of paying for my next camp. Do you know what I mean? So that's yeah. just the joys. But at the start, I suppose. Yeah, absolutely. And obviously you mentioned John there and, and at the time with that loss, like, I mean, the social media itself is so brutal at times, you know what I mean? That there's some people split and people having so many different opinions on that fight and what happened. Um, do you think that's something like not having the crowd and, and not being a normal circumstance, do you think that that played a part in, in John's loss or was it just the look of the draw on the night? I think it can do. Like, it, like look, it was just Maxie's night and uh, like I said, Maxie had trained like that was his world title fight. Yeah. So, like, he'd been sparring, I just heard today, he'd been sparring Jack Carroll for four weeks straight before that fight. Like, he treated that as a world title fight. And yeah. John obviously didn't, which he said that after himself. So, I think that was one aspect of it. And then, obviously, yeah, John likes to entertain and he loves the crowd there. So, it can, like, it can. He said he couldn't get up for it. So, then he had a couple of problems with the weight and stuff as well, didn't he? So, look, there was a number mm -hmm. of things. Yeah. Up. Um, he'll rebuild and he'll come again. So about, uh, like, with yourself then, do you think about how, obviously you don't want to think about a loss and you're, I know that your mindset is a massive part of you as a fighter and it's very positive and you're always like, you know, the law of attraction, as it should we say. But do you think about what a loss could do to your career, as in like it could set you back or it might derail you a little bit from what everyone has planned for you? Yeah, of course, but I think... I think as well, like, you kind of need to, just for the simple reason, to get up for the fights. Like, mm -hmm. you don't really, I think about if I lose tomorrow night, what, what could potentially, what what potentially that brings as well, do you know what I mean? So that that will make sure that I get up for the fight tomorrow night because mm -hmm. I, I can't afford to lose it. So, yeah, it's, it, like, it is, a, it, is, it is a factor and you, I think it is something that you have to think about. Absolutely. In terms of your opponents, more like Craig Woodruff, um, obviously, as I said, three, four weeks now, it was changed from Kieran Gething. Um, mm. How did you change up or did you change up much in terms of like your preparation for tomorrow night? Not really, no. Um, <laughs> Tommy McCarthy, actually, team captain Tommy Mack, I asked him the tactics <laughs> when, we got, when we got the change of opponents and he always says to me in the gym, just focus on yourself because if you do what you do well in the ring, there's nobody can can stand with you. If you start changing your tactics to suit somebody else then you're kind of fighting into their game plan you know what I mean so not really we call mm -hmm. tactics this week um, myself and Pete obviously but it's just go in and do what I do and um, you there? oh you're back have we lost Gary? maybe it'll come back in Oh, there's questions. Will I have a look at the questions while we're waiting for Gary to reconnect? Let's see. <laughs> Highly eaten. <laughs> sort out your goddamn Wi-Fi over there. Maybe we'll get him back. Let me have a look at some questions. Gary, can you hear me? Um... Apologies for that. I can hear. Oh, you're there. You're there. You're there. With with a slight uh, technical technical issue. Um. So you were talking there, obviously, about uh, Tommy Mac. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. So you were saying, team captain Tommy Mac. I don't yeah. think I've ever asked any of you why has he been given this title. I mean, he tells me all the time when I see him, Lydia, I'm the team captain, but I've never actually asked you why he is. <laughs> because he says he is. <laughs> That's simply the only reason. Um, <laughs> nobody has ever appointed him team captain, but um, yeah, Luke, Luke and him have a couple of uh, arguments over. Luke kind of wants the spot as well, but I don't know. I don't know. Let them let them have a spar over. I call I call Tommy team captain at the minute. Anyway, Luke is probably too reserved to be team yeah, captain. Tommy I think you need a big so energy, Tommy, right? <laughs> Tommy makes sure we clean the gym when we're done and throw the tape in the bin and all that crack, like, you know? So, <laughs> um, yeah, Luke, Luke needs to be a little bit more stern if he wants to, if he wants a job. Yeah, definitely. So, obviously, like, I mean, every time... Want it, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> every time that I'm speaking to any of you guys, like, I always ask about, you know, how life is like in the gym because we're just seeing it now. 
obviously you've been with Pete for so long, but you've okay. obviously been there from kind of the start, we'll say, and now, you know, and, and Luke as well, the start of this new kind of generation of Pete Taylor stable, I suppose. So yeah. how is life going over there? Yeah, it's growing all the time, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. every, every day I walk in the gym, there's a new, there's a new team member there, but no, it's going really well. The, the level has, uh, the level has definitely stepped up. We have Jordan, obviously, now the two Tyrones yeah. are there. And um, Maria, who's over from Croatia, is an animal as well. She's Croatian national yeah. team trying to qualify for the Olympics. Um, yeah, and then we've obviously Davy, Luke. Um, I'm sorry if I'm forgetting. Like, there's like twenty people there, so I'm sorry if I'm forgetting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we we have a good stable there, and uh, it just it makes for every day you go in when there's when it's a sparring day. There's different matches there, and it's it's dog like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's, and uh, obviously and, the two McKenna brothers up there today with Tyler. Yeah, I've seen that. I was just saying to Pete, I would have loved to see that spar, Aaron and Jordan. I'd say I I'm telling you, that's a pay per view spar yeah, if yeah, ever I've that. ever heard. Right? That's that's the one thing I was raising about the bubble today that I wasn't back to see that. Yeah, definitely. Like the, the those two guys. I don't think that kind of obviously boxing Irish boxing media do cover the McKenna brothers like completely and, and about everything they've achieved. But I don't know why mainstream media haven't jumped on them yet. Like what they're doing, who yeah, they're working was, with, like, you know, what they've that. achieved. Yeah. Yeah. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. It's a good they time, right? It's a, it it's healthy. The Irish boxing scene is healthy at the moment. Oh, most definitely. Most de Like I, I, people ask you about, about certain names or like ask you who's coming through and stuff and you might give them 10 names every every time but there's easily another 10 that you could give them that you forget about do you know what I mean only after yeah. you finish them you say oh and them and them and them yeah there's so many up and coming now tell me two, two making their debut on this show tomorrow night uh, McGivern and Fergus Quinn I know they're up yeah top. absolutely can't wait well hopefully they both do well yeah no doubt they will this is done before me tomorrow so Good stuff, right? Well, we have a look in the question box and see what everyone wants to ask you. I'll have a few questions there. Let's go. There we go, right? Um, the Stig of Boxing. The oh, diva yeah. is looking good, he says. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Screamer would... <laughs> Here. Why the... Screamer Why... would like me to Why... ask you. Go on. My live kept going off because he was ringing me on WhatsApp during this. He's an idiot. He's an idiot. <laughs> you... Screamer, you absolute bollocks. Why would you do that? <laughs> we'll see you the next time I'm in the gym. Yeah. What has he asked? I probably won't He's that. asked, ask yeah. Gary, where did he get his new runners he <laughs> had on at the weigh-in? <laughs> He's an idiot, Screamer. Tell him, uh, where are they? I got them in for their village last week. On sale. Give us a look that. at him. Come on. I have to tell him they're on sale because uh, he did spend the money he's telling me that we should be saving for a house he thinks he's me that wait give us a look give us a look at the runners yeah, yeah. well he's probably right chats little night chats yeah they're not yeah and look so I was in the airport yesterday penny. they're lovely and I got fucking coffee on them I was oh. right but yeah oh. they're on sales we're, we're, don't worry about it we'll get you a tub of vanish on your way home right get that staying yeah. out <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, Screamer, you're, you're too many questions in there. I'm not asking any more. <laughs> um, Lee Eaton has said, "You are my hero, Gary." Oh, and I, I would imagine he's telling the truth as well. Um, Hello. It's Hello. it's Matt Meehan Boxing has asked, "Would you fight in Nice?" And Nice obviously is your hometown. Yeah, of course, I'd love to fight in Nice. Um, one day we were we were. There was something in the works uh, to start my professional career. Um, nothing ever came of it, but hopefully one day I'll get to fight there, 100%. What is the venue that's in Nace? Where could you fight? Nace Race Course is an outdoor venue. Oh, a mi that would be unreal, right? In the a summer night, like June or July in, in Nace. will be class. One Session. day. Yeah, it'd be absolutely amazing. Like I think the Fela in Belfast has just set a standard now that that sort of event is possible and people are interested in it. Yeah. I think Gary said yeah. He agreed with me. Right, Did can you, you hear me? Have you been were you to the Fela last year? No. Yeah, I was there. <laughs> <laughs> it's class. Sorry. For <laughs> I wasn't there. 
<laughs> oh, I was a bit. I was meant to go, but I was booked for another show, and I went to another show. And I remember when I done a live with Lee Eaton, and we were talking about it. And I was like, it was, you know, it looks so amazing. And he's like, yeah. He's like, and, and you enjoyed yourself, right? I was like, I wasn't there, but it looked fantastic. He was disgusted. So I'm definitely going to be at the next one. You missed Jamie, Con- Jamie Conlon has promised me a first row seat or oh, a front row seat. So I'll be there. Um, right, let's have a look. Um, Bare Knuckle Barber has said, would love to see more behind the scenes footage of your training camps. Any plans? Yeah, I'll, I'll uh, vlog my next training camp. Do, because obviously you, we, you, I know that I interviewed uh, Bob Staley on the First Exchange podcast, who you've uh- been working with. Can you hear me? Yeah, I said that was, I listened to the podcast, that was class. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, she's fantastic. We know each other years. Like, I know her about 15 years. It's crazy how everything has come full circle now. Um, um, but if, so, if someone is out there that could do what she does for photograph for video, yeah. unbelievable. Well, we have something. Like, I, I did have, in the lead up to the Irish title fight, um, a videographer, Niall Sheeran. Um, followed the camp up until the Irish title fight and we, we got something made which hopefully will be on TV one day soon um, it looks really really good and uh, only a couple of people have seen it but it's called The Prospect um, it's, uh, Very good. it's a minute documentary so but it, like he's made a 30 minute documentary has hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours like, so we're going to continue it on and up until world title wins and hopefully we'll make a movie one day I'm telling you, that would be... Un- well, I mean, look, obviously we had Katie Taylor's documentary and then we had the notorious Conor McGregor's one. So if you see about all the footage, how that goes into actually making an epic film after the kind of towards the end of the journey. Everybody's kind of into the start because everybody knows the bright lights in Vegas and, and all that crack in, in yeah. the Conor McGregor. But it's when he started out in SBG and he had spots in his face and he's working as an electrician around the doll. Like, you know what I mean? That's yeah. what people- I'm very happy to sell this content as well, <laughs> yeah, if you yeah. want to put it in it. <laughs> we'll I need a new pair of runners. <laughs> <laughs> right, go on. <laughs> Let's have a look and see if we can get one more here. Um, Alex Richardson, number 16, has asked, if Gary wins this fight, is he looking for bigger titles? Yeah, hopefully after I get, get tomorrow out of the way. And fight for a European title before Christmas. Is the plan? Not looking. Is that past... realistic? Yeah, one hundred percent. That's in the works, but not looking past tomorrow night. Obviously, brilliant. Have to get that done first, but yeah, I would imagine um, get tomorrow night out of the way, and it would be a European ranking belt next. Brilliant! Another belt! Another belt! Yeah, yeah not a bad twenty twenty. No, I'm telling you, for someone who like for a. a Someone who's had a pandemic in the way, um, not a bad 2020 is right. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully we'll be there. Hopefully they'll allow at least some oh, people to attend. So. October, November. Um, there's some yeah, sort of... Fingers crossed. You'll get in media pass. It, well, let's hope so. If Lee, will, <laughs> Lee is still watching this, hook me up. There's no way that you can win another title and I don't do a post-fight interview. Yeah, because that first one was... That's, that's iconic now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> don't, Lee's um, not the boss. Why did Lee tell you he can get your media pass? Lee's not the boss. <laughs> he just likes to think he's the boss. Ian is <laughs> no, the boss. No, he doesn't. He doesn't. Ian he doesn't. <laughs> oh, I'll sweet talk Ian in the lead up to it. Don't worry. I have them all. I'll get them all wrapped. Um, but listen, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Night no, before your fight. So thank you so much. Because it's a boring, boring time. So thank you for passing the half an hour. No problem. You're more than welcome. And I look forward to talking to you um, tomorrow night. Send you a little congratulations text. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, but tell everyone to say hello. Tell Pete I said hi. And hi. Um, yeah, look, can't wait to watch it. It's obviously live on uh, live streamed on IFL TV tomorrow night yeah. on YouTube. I'm first fight seven o'clock. So tune in. Great hey. stuff. Yeah. Yeah, brilliant. Okay, get a good night's sleep, and we'll chat to you tomorrow. Yeah, thanks, William. See you later, Gary.